So welcome everyone to today's Shaman's Directory live event, a hummingbird pollinator ceremony with Ava Tree Bloom. Welcome Ava. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. So before we begin, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Shaman's Directory and introduce Ava for those of you who don't know her. So Shaman's Directory is an online global platform for shamanic earth-based services. We are created for First Nation original people and Western trained shamanic practitioners, healers and teachers to offer their wisdom and gifts. And for anyone who is seeking healing or to find more balance in their lives to make an appointment. So you can find us online at shamansdirectory.com. And we're welcoming Ava Tree today for our hummingbird pollinator ceremony. And I'm just going to take a minute to tell you a little bit about Ava before we begin. So Ava is both a member of our directory and a member of the team at Shaman's Directory. And what it means to be a member of the team is that you are behind the scenes helping to bring our programs to the world. So we are delighted to have Ava here to share her gifts and hummingbird blessings with us today. Ava is an earth-based shamanic energy practitioner dedicated to helping others to alchemize dis-ease and pain from unresolved trauma into vibrant health, unconditional love, and heart-centered purpose. She has been a student of the shamanic healing arts for the past 25 years and considers this her life path. On this path, she has experienced extraordinary healing on every level, including healing a rare and aggressive form of cancer. She also brings over two decades of hands-on clinical practice as a biodynamic craniosacral therapist. Eva's primary focus aligns with the Andean Cosmovision and the alignment of her life in harmony with the fourth level PACO principles, taught by Peruvian masters Don Juan Nunez del Prado and his son Ivan Nunez del Prado. She's also studied Hampak healer techniques with respected healer Vilma Pinedo and the Paco mentoring program through the Andean Mystical School. Eva is a Mesa carrier of the rainbow lineage from Maestro Freddy Puma Quispe Singona, who she studied with for the past three years. And she also carries a Mesa in the Pachacuti Mesa tradition of Maestro Don Oscar Miro Casada. So Eva, thank you for being here. Our first pair of hummingbirds just returned here this week. We have four pairs that spend the summer with us, two ruby-throated and two rufous hummingbird families who spend their summers with us each year. So they arrived at my slider on schedule this week asking where their nectar was. So we're all here ready for the such, ceremony. <laughs> oh, such perfection. Thank you so much, Tricia. Yeah, the hummingbird ha has just arrived back here as well. I'm, I'm coming to you from uh, beautiful Nelson, BC in the Kootenays, in the Rocky Mountains in Canada, and they've just arrived. I wanna say three or four days ago, that was it. And we can hear them zooming around and bringing their beautiful messages. So we were talking just before we started about maybe beginning with burning a little bit of cedar. Mm, so I love that. A dear friend of ours at Shaman's Directory, Mona McWhorter, is an Anishinaabe woman from Canada as well. And she has taught us that the only sound that spirit can hear is the sound of crackling cedar. So we thought that we would burn a little bit of cedar to set our intentions and prayers for the ceremony today. So I hope that you can hear this. We'll see if you can. Mm -hmm. You can take a little bit of the smoke if you'd like. So welcome everyone. And Ava, we would love to have you share a little bit about um, yourself and how you landed on this path of shamanic earth-based wisdom. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I think like so many of us that are on this path, um, you know, 
it's almost like we're born into it and then we go through a period in our childhood where we where we have these experiences and then we then we need to remember ourselves back home and that was the case also for me and i will say that i was a nature child i was more comfortable in communion with pachamama our beautiful earth and i spoke with animals and i hung out on mossy stream beds and talked with fairies and it wasn't until um well until I, I i actually went through my own um healing crisis i would say that i formally began my training and 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 formally stepped onto my own path of healing which then informed how yeah it really informed my life path and and why i was so dedicated so passionate about this path um because it's it's such an important path and that's why i'm so delighted to be connected with the shaman's directory and because this vision of bringing forward these wisdom ways these ways of remembering ourselves that um show up all over the globe and in these times this this remembrance of um our deep deep connection to mother earth and the fact that we are never alone i believe is really is really helping everyone turn the lens and come back to a place of love and alignment um yeah i i went through a many 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 segues with my path i worked with many teachers and i'm so grateful for everyone everyone there was a, a learning within that even though it was hard sometimes even though there was stumble steps even though sometimes you know you're in that place where um you feel like you're in the shadow work and and you may not even know where you are so within all of that there has been Pachamama. There has been earth. There has been um, step by step these signs, these symbols, these ways that the animals come and speak to me, give me their feathers, um, show up when I call them, that just continues this reciprocity, continues to say, yes, here I am. I'm going to show up with all my heart, all my presence, and um, and just be in this walk. And this walk is a beauty walk. That's how I think of shamanic work. Actually, is um, and and I I actually did do I think. And there's there's so many different types of shamanic work, but part of my journey was to even go into uh the some shamanic work that was fierce i almost want to say it was a warrior way and it was a way where i had to become aware of um energies that that may be grabbing me and i had to become aware of where i was leaking energy and how i was giving away my power and so on this journey of my own healing um i started to become very sensitive to the living energy and how to track that and how to work with that and all ultimately how to alchemize it so that um so that i could bring it up into a frequency of joy and and life and thriving and um eventually right before i had children actually it was right when i had children i was really involved with a powerful powerful shamanic group we called ourselves the the um star diamond healers and we were doing deep deep work i i really feel like we were in the trenches if you will um doing really big global work working with um the environment and with the politics and with um abuse and it, it felt like we were in the trenches and so it, we were cleaning and clearing and um working with these with these entities and energies 
And, and then one day I suddenly realized so clearly, so profoundly, so um, unequivocally that in my new role as a mother, I couldn't do that work in that way. And so it was a very painful process. I had to, um, because I was so identified with that and I had studied with them and been with them and actually been an elder in that group for years. And I stepped back. And in that stepping back, that is when I found Andean wisdom. That's when the, um, yeah, when the Cosmo vision, the Peruvian Cosmo vision really took seed and, and bloomed in my heart. And I love that because that to me is a coming back to who I was as a child. And it's a coming back to the beauty way where every step you're, you're stepping in love. You're cultivating this highest level of gratitude and kindness and you know you're just you're just living love and that um and and of course in relationship so the work i do now is all relational everything is relational because first and foremost we are children of this beautiful earth and as children of the earth we can drop into that. We can ask for help. We can ask for support. And then we can give our love. And in so doing that, we are stepping into uh, the Quechua word is Aini. And this means sacred reciprocity. This means that nothing goes one way. And it allows us to put down some of our shame, our blame, our old stories about uh, poor me, or I didn't get this, or I'm all alone, whatever it is, and actually put those those suffering pieces down and 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 not even just down, but put them down consciously. Because when we put them down consciously, then, this, this earth mother, this, this incredible resilience of our beautiful earth receives it as compost, as food, as an offering. And so when we come into that place, suddenly everything changes. So everything that was coming at me um, was suddenly filled with beauty, was suddenly filled with life. And it's not to say there's not challenges. And of course, you know, this is, this is our, our earth walk in this embodiment, but the Andean wisdom way dovetailed so beautifully with all my study and all my work as a biodynamic cranial sacral therapist, because the cranial sacral work is about calling forward our innate wisdom within and listening to, um, listening to the majesty, listening to the healing power that is our body. And so in the Andean cosmology, we are the earth. We are sacred nature. So there's this beautiful confluence where um, that deep listening of the embodiment work and the somatic work just comes together with this sensitivity of the energy work that the masters of the Carol Nation and, and all through Peru and the, the Pacos and the medicine men and the medicine women carry that just opened my heart and um, yeah, life-changing and brought me here, brought me to this much more global community. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about, about my path and, and I love what I do. I'm so passionate. I feel so privileged to be able to work one-on-one -on -one and do healing sessions and bring my joy, bring my love for this work because I, I know that each of us has this incredible medicine within us, within each person. There's this beautiful, magnificent brilliance that is ready to come forth and is ready to come into our fullest blooming. 
And that's really why I wanted to do a, a, a hummingbird ceremony today because of this idea of blooming because of the time of year and spring and now finally the flowers are coming here in the northern hemisphere anyway and because this hummingbird represents this um this mighty pollinator who is in such sacred aini with the world and i feel that's true of all of our our tiny winged ones and and you know the, the 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 bees and the flies and the wasps and the bats and various birds and you know they are in collaboration and communion with our fields they're in this poetic communication with our meadows they are they're singing songs to our rivers and our forests and in that song is the song of life and in that song is the web of life so that's what when when i got this invitation trisha i thought oh my gosh i wanna i wanna work with hummingbird and share all that joy and all that love and then give that back today in this co-created uh ceremony that we'll be in together that we're already in um we'll be offering our heart and our gratitude to these beautiful beings. Thank you so much for that sort of introduction of who you are and uh, of our ceremony today with Hummingbird. And you just said so many beautiful things, um, really inspiring things about your journey. I loved that you came to that point in your life where you were having children and you realized that you had to shift gears but that you didn't want to step off the path mm. you wanted to find a way to integrate that would integrate yourself as a mother into that same uh on the same path and that you found the andean path in that at that moment mm. and um i we were just recently talking to a siberian shaman and asking him what his his mission was you know with his teachings and he said there are too many sleeping healers mm. and it's time to wake them up. Wow. And that it really sounds like that's your mission as well, you know, is to help people wake up the healing wisdom within them. So Absolutely. I'm just really inspired. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love what you just said too. And, and this is, this is at the heart of it that, in these times, um, I really believe we are being asked to wake up the healer within, and 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 catch while that is the the humpback or the humpy, this this part of ourselves that, um, yeah, is going to step forward with 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 you know and peel off the veils and and be willing to take these overlays off and put down our suffering and actually um with will with our will and with discernment say yes to our own healing and so i'll just share a little bit about hummingbird and actually before i do that because we're already we're already in it and what i'd love to do actually is i'll just call in some sacred space um so i'm going to just invite all of us to if you feel to close your eyes and just gently deepen your breath and feel your heart we're calling all of ourselves, all of the listeners, all of the viewers, all of the beautiful souls, the beautiful beings gathered together in this moment, just calling ourselves to ourselves in sacred time, in sacred space. And just gently feel your body settling. Feel your body receive this 
blessing of gravity. And you feel this gravity. And I love to think of this as this is Pachamama giving you her, her love. She's inviting us deeper to drop in. So just in this moment, root down, sense and perceive this rooting down from the soles of our feet and from our sacrum. And just feel Pachamama, our earth mother, holding us in this moment with so much love. Pachamama, great mystery, Viracocha, Mamakia, Mother Moon, Intitaita, Father Sun, Kuichi, beautiful, beautiful rainbow energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for connecting us to our cosmic origins. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity to be together in sacred play, in sacred ceremony at the Shaman's Directory. Come, come, dear guardians, dear beautiful mountain beings, apus, come, hampoi, hampoi, hampoi. Calling in our sacred goddesses, our nustas of the divine feminine. In all the beautiful kochas, the beautiful waterways of the world, come, come, hampoi, hampoi, hampoi. Calling in the great winged ones, the great messengers, feeling them arrive so beautifully. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us become bridges to receive and embody these wisdom ways and walk every step in beauty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we call in our ancestors with so much gratitude, opening our heart, giving great thanks, and great thanks to our biological parents in this moment to allow us to be in this sacred time in this sacred space. Calling in Cosmic Mother, Cosmic Father. Come, hum, poi, hum, poi, hum, poi. And then bringing a breath to our heart with so much generosity, so much love. You can even bring your left hand or your right hand to the heart. And then let that go. And this inhale, this next inhale, we're gonna bring in love to the heart. We're gonna send our exhale out with so much gratitude and blessing to this circle, to this shaman's directory circle right now, to exhale. And bring in our second inhale with so much love and so much gratitude. And we're gonna see and feel all of the pollinators of the world and the beautiful Siwar Kenti, the hummingbird. And we're gonna give our love. And on the third breath, we're just gonna breathe in again into the heart temple, our sunko. And exhale, love to our whole global community. And with a smile, we're gonna just come back gently with soft vision into this shared space together. Ah, thank you. Thank you for being, being here. I can feel all of the great elementals joining us, our animal allies joining us. And this is the magic of co-created ceremony because all of our medicine arrives in this moment. And I can feel and sense and perceive 
each of you and how when we start calling in and when we drop into sacred space, how our frequency raises, how we just become these alchemical beings and we wake up, we remember ourselves. So wanted to say that the hummingbird in so many cultures is this iconic, uh, mythological being and in the most uh, pristine ways in the most simple ways we can say that hummingbird brings joy but when we also think about um, the physical attributes of this pollinator it's it's mind-blowing it's truly mind-blowing this is a little tiny bird. It has over 900 feathers and its, its wings beat the fastest, you know, so, so fast and its heart beats so, so fast. It has excellent vision. It can and actually needs to receive twice its amount of nectar, twice its weight in body weight in nectar every single day so this this um this mighty being is um always and ever in ceremony it's always seeking out this nectar and we could think of the nectar as as our it, it's a metaphor this nectar is a metaphor for um the sweetest essence and that's one of the most powerful, powerful blessings that the hummingbird gives us is that the hummingbird tells us to always and ever find the flower, find the flower. And first we have to find it in ourselves. So first, with hummingbird medicine, when we really receive the medicine of this, this being, I feel that we're asked to find our own flowering. And this brings me back to this idea of sacred Aini, this reciprocity that, we were, that I was talking about, that says nothing goes one way. And so when we have the ability to recognize our own flowering, recognize that we are sacred nature, recognize that we are beauty, then we have the ability to see that in every other person. We have the ability to see the flowering in even the most difficult relationships. And, and most importantly, that's where we want to see that flowering. We want to see that flowering in, in family dynamics that, um, that we need to transcend, that we need to heal from. So places where uh, we've had ancestral harm or, or trauma or um, old grief, old sorrow, um, all these things that affect our well-being and then affect our actual, our physical temple, affect how much we can be in our joy. Um, hummingbird gives us this. Hummingbird gives us this ability to transcend our ego and transcend our uh, human judgment and our sort of more intellectual construct of, um, oh, they did this to me or, or, you know, it's not fair or, um, you know, making somebody other and, and, and that sense of divisiveness, which in the Andean tradition creates what we call hucha. It creates density. And so the hummingbird medicine has the ability to actually transcend that. And in some cultures, they even say the hummingbird transcends time and space. You know, they, they can flutter and be completely still. So they also give us this medicine of 
even in the center, the eye of the storm, even if things feel like chaos, if we drop into hummingbird medicine, then we're right in the center of sacred time and sacred space, which is pure presence and pure love when we can open our hearts to it. So, so many gifts of hummingbird. And I am just so excited to play with this, play with this mighty, beautiful flying flower. And um, I guess maybe here I'll just pause and see, is there any questions right now um, before we go i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna go together on a little guided journey a hummingbird journey and then um yeah do do some healing with that but before we start i just wonder if there's any questions if we want to take a pause here or do we want to just jump in and you can let me know what you think trisha if anyone has any questions, feel free to use the reactions button at the bottom of your um, Zoom screen, and you can just raise your hand, questions or comments so far, oh. thoughts, ideas, things that you're, that you are being inspired to think about so far. And mm. like to share. Perfection. Yeah. I love that we're in this co-created space together and that we are, um, we're on the internet, but as my beloved teacher Puma says, we're actually connecting on the internet right now. And it's so true because we are actually transcending uh, time and space right now. It's really miraculous that we're all together. It's, 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 it's mind blowing. So yeah. I think one of your teachers says um, that we're gathering at the heart of the computer. Ah, right. And oh I love gosh. that. I love that expression. Right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, um, I'm seeing in the chat. Um, this is so beautiful. It brought me to tears. Let's jump in. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Okay. Let's jump in. I love this. Yeah, so wherever you are, I want you to, uh, I invite you to, if you have a Mesa, uh, a Mesa is, uh, it's a medicine bundle, um, but whatever that means to you. So whatever your altar is, just inviting you to, um, yeah, have it before you or have it, have it can be closed or open. We've already called in sacred space, but I'm gonna old, actually light this beautiful candle. My daughter found this for me. It's a little, um, it's a little butterfly with a flower just to, just to be playful in this moment. So if you have a candle and you'd like to light it, that's beautiful. We've already had the wonderful, uh, yes, we've already had the wonderful allyship and support of the smudge of the sacred cedar. Ah, oh, Robert George is sharing the beautiful eagle feather. Yes, thank you. Your mesa is so beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm, gorgeous. Yeah. And we also have our altar inside our own body. We also have our, um, yeah, we have our, we have our medicine inside of us. So just an invitation to um, drop into whatever that means, the unique beauty of each of us. And that reminds me, and I wanna actually grab one of my eagle feathers too. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this beautiful beautiful one the winged one okay well um first i'm gonna take us on a little journey i have this beautiful carnation here and i've got the color red to represent passion and um 
I want you again to close your eyes in this sacred space. And you're also welcome if you're more comfortable um, to lie down if you need to. We're gonna we're gonna go on a about a 15 minute little journey together. And I want you to be as just most comfortable in your sacred space. So however you want to settle in, maybe you need a blanket. Um, yeah, so closing your eyes. Dropping in to your embodiment. I want you to imagine and sense and feel your crown, your uma, opening like a thousand petaled lotus. And we're going to send this petition from our heart up to the heavens up to Hanuk Pacha, the upper world, the heavens, the source energy, full of highest frequency of Sami, full of pure love. And we're going to call in and we're going to send our petition and just ask this mighty, beautiful being, Siwara Kenti, the royal hummingbird, to come in and bless us today. And as we send this petition up, we instantly begin to feel and sense and perceive this column of white gold come pouring down. This Sami, this high frequency, this Samin Chaikui, and it comes pouring down and we receive it through the Uma, through the crown. And we begin to soften in our brain. We begin to feel the sacred essence of water washing all of our thought processes. We feel this blessing, this limpia coming from above and filling up this precious, precious reservoir called the Cisterna Cava. And the Cisterna Cava is this pool between the left and right hemisphere in our brain. And so it's filling up and it's filling with stars. It's filling with resiliency and light. It's filling with the diamond light of sun. And this sparkling energy is beginning to then pour through our whole body, through our central nervous system. It's becoming cerebral spinal fluid and it's becoming the potency and the breath of life pouring through us, washing and cleaning every cell. And we feel this pouring into our heart space, pouring down, bringing spaciousness, bringing so much uh, activated gratitude into the heart space, igniting the sacred essence of Munai. This is activated love, unconditional love, abundant, unconditional love, combined with will and liberation. And this channel of liquid light from the above is just pouring down, blessing all of our tissue, our blood, going through the vertebral spaces, the interstitial spaces, coming into our organs, blessing, blessing, blessing. And with our breath and our intention, we're going to offer to this stream of liquid light any density, any hardship, any sadness that we may be feeling. So 
be generous with yourself as this gorgeous opportunity of this frequency pouring through us and just offer your grief to this river. And it's taken by this river of liquid light and it's transformed effortlessly. And it goes pouring down into the very heart of our beautiful Pachamama. And she receives it with so much love. As our whole light energy bubble, our luminous field, our pokpo, our bubble around us begins to glimmer and glow, just keep offering into this stream of living light, this blessing, this limpia, whatever needs to be released in this moment with consciousness. And it all goes pouring down, 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 down to the heart of Pachamama. And we see and sense and perceive at this heart, the heart of our living earth, our great, great mother this gorgeous emerald green. And as we love her, and as we are giving this love, she begins to send a loop of love back from the very core of the heart, heart of the earth. And so now we have this loop of emerald green, gold, living, gorgeous vitality, strengthening, coming up through our feet. And this loop of gold from above and this loop of green from below. It's going to meet right at our solar plexus. So if you want to put your hands there and begin to feel and perceive this sense of vibration, a sense of waking up. Bring your breath here with consciousness. And we realize this inner garden where these two loops from above and from below meet is this perfect embodiment and we find our inconceit, our wilkamuhu. This is our sacred seed of infinite potential. So bring your next breath as the most beautiful breath, the most delicious breath of life to this seed. And just notice, is this, uh, is this garden dry? Or is it, is it too mucky? Is, it, is there too much water? Is the seed washing away? What's the pH of the soil? Is there, is there life here? Just noticing. And then we're gonna ask and call in the blessing of Inti Taita the solar energy of the sun. And the sun is going to wake the seed up. It's like this love affair. We're calling in the divine masculine here. Blessing the divine feminine, this, this synergy within our own bodies. And we're working with our own inner garden. And we call in the blessings of the rain, this gentle, gentle rain, just the perfect amount. Watering and irrigating. And then miraculously, up comes this green with the most beautiful leaves. Up comes this flowering. And this flowering comes up into our heart. 
You can bring your hands to your heart if you feel to. And with your breath and with your vista open, dropping into this inner temple of the heart. As you receive the flowering of your own brilliance. So just noticing, how does this feel? How does this look? What color is your brilliance? How do the petals feel? How does it feel to be so trusting, to trust yourself first and last, to know that you are sacred nature and then just let yourself sway a little bit as we call in the blessings of the wind the waira with this slight rocking you begin to smell the fragrance of our own essence this beautiful flowering. And we begin to hear all around us this buzzing, this tiny minutia, the sounds of tiny little creeping and crawling. We begin to sense the, the moths and the ants the mycelium wisdom that's this network that is our garden. And we just feeling the fragrance and the beauty and the buzzing and our whole being starts to vibrate. We feeling our heart just activating even more with this love of our blossoming. And then coming towards us, Siwar Kenti, this incredible, mighty jewel, almost like a flying flower, ruby red with sparks of emerald green, gold with these little beautiful charcoal feet, these beautiful big eyes, and this hummingbird flies right at you and comes right before you. And with all our love, all of our gratitude, we invite the hummingbird deeply, deeply, deeply into the center of our whole being. And this hummingbird comes and enters this heart space and drinks of our own essence and in this moment, we witness ourself in the I am that I am. This is in Quechua, no can cani. I am. And so each of us in this moment, let's just say together, I am hummingbird. No can, can he, see what can he. Beautiful. And as this bright vibration is in our heart, in our being, suddenly we recognize that we are in a field of flowers. That all around us is the most beautiful blooming of every kind, every unique flower. And we realize that we are being asked to wake up. We realize we're being asked to be leaders and to step out so courageously and share our medicine, share our own hearts flowering so that we can be in Aini, sacred reciprocity with all things. 
And so as one, we fly out as we're honoring all the pollinators and the mighty, mighty hummingbird. And we're going to seek out in this moment a flower that may be the most difficult, <clears throat> the most difficult to find. So within this field, perhaps there's somebody in your family that, that needs the, the extra healing, the extra medicine that this beautiful hummingbird brings us. Perhaps there's some old grief, or maybe you haven't spoken to this person in a long time. So in the causal field, this, this field of full potential that we are in right now, seek that person out. And let your essence transcend the judgment, transcend the sadness, transcend the old story, and see their flowering. And when you see their flowering, go even further and receive the nectar. And the nectar is what ignites us. It is the alchemy. It's the aha. And this is when we put down our suffering and we receive this medicine, this alchemy that al allows us as healers, as medicine men, as medicine women, to fly free and transcend time and space and be leaders and, and take initiative and be creative because the hummingbird represents the new era of awakefulness. And so when we're complete with that, that aha, when we've harvested that essence, then we come back, the hummingbird comes back, it enters right into our heart's temple, right into this magical, magical sunko, this heart space. And we feel ourselves with the flower and we're waving in the wind a little bit. We're dropping down into the Inca seed. We're holding this medicine now in our DNA, in our cellular matrix. And gently, 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 we come back with a smile on our face, with so much love, so much gratitude from this beautiful, beautiful being. Just taking our time to come back and fully arrive back into this time and space. Welcome, welcome back everyone. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to just share my, um, this little, this little offering here, if I can figure out how to share my screen right now. I'm gonna pour some water and I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. So this is the beautiful hummingbird and I've got the hummingbird up here. Got this beautiful crystal, this is my center, my, my alki. And I've got hummingbird here on this incredible textile. And what I wanted to do with us as we're, as we're anchoring in our journey 
I want to invite this idea of sacred play. And in Quechua, this is uh, Pukliai. And this is just this brilliant, brilliant, beautiful, elegant word. Because Pukliai means sacred play and it means ceremony. So just to complete this before we open it up for questions and insights and other sharing, I wanted to um, place these four flowers in these portals and that way we can anchor our prayers together. So we're gonna call in the sacred essences um, in each direction. So in the east, I'm going to place hummingbird because this is the mighty being of the new era. And I'm gonna bring in this gorgeous, gorgeous flower here. Open this portal. Look, we've got lots of hummingbirds here. Yes, there we go. So in the portal of the East, we're calling in that sacred essence of Munai, which I mentioned is unconditional love. And so here in this space, let's each of us just anchor our prayers in for uh, the most abundance of love for ourselves, for our health, for our loved ones, for our children, for our families, um, for our communities, for our global community. And we want to just call in and manifest the most beautiful flowering with this moon eye, this most beautiful um, essence of unconditional love. So we're just calling in Hampoi Munai, Hampoi, Hampoi, Hampoi. And in the portal of the West, just dropping down, we're going to anchor in this sacred essence of Yang Kai. And this is the call that the hummingbird is calling each of us to wake up our inner healer. It's that humpy, the humpak, the, the, our, our own medicine. And so the young kai means our sacred service. So we want to anchor in today all of that which we want to align with, all of the ways that we want to bring our sacred service forward in the world. Hampoi, young kai, hampoi, hampoi, hampoi. Come, come, sacred service. Help us align with all of our projects. Help us bring forward our most brilliant uh, parts of ourselves, our best, best medicine. And may it always and ever be in service, anchored first through the heart of love and munai. So that comes into the alignment with the moon eye and anchors. And we can find this in our belly, this essence of young Kai. This is how we meet everything that life brings us and how we digest it energetically, how we can alchemize it and step it up as leaders, as teachers in this new era. And then we're gonna open and bless with this beautiful flower, the portal of the North. And we're gonna call in this uh, amazing, powerful, powerful, powerful energy of Kausai. And Kausai is this animating essence, this power that is within all things. And with this, we are going to, through the heart of love, through the anchoring of our discipline and our yes and our sacred service, now we're going to anchor in our personal project, our personal service, and we're going to align it with this cosmic energy of Kausai. So we're going to call in Kausai and just each of us take a moment to um, call in and align with what is it that we are calling forth from ourselves? What is it that we want to courageously step forward with? And that's how we're going to call in Kausai. Humpoi, Kausai, Humpoi, Humpoi. 
help us, great spirit, help us align, help us, all these guardians, help us, uh, all these winged ones, these angelic ones, these apus, these mustas, help us align our sacred service with so much love, with so much commitment, with so much joy. Let us anchor this in and may it be in perfect alignment with the cosmic project, with Pachamama's project for us. And we bring that flowering into this portal. And finally, we're going to open in the south here, aligning with all these pieces, with Munai, with our sacred service, with this cosmic energy. Finally, we're going to anchor in up here with the crown, with the Uma, and we're going to call in Yachai. And Yachai is, um, it's this way that we, as, uh, as medicine people, are becoming bridges where we're receiving all this download, all this this information um, from 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 past ancestral generations, from from cosmic wisdom, from the heavens, from the Hanuk Pacha, and we're receiving it. And so, with this prayer, we want to anchor in. How do we change? Uh, how do we receive it into our cellular biology that really wakes us up? really brings us into our uh, best alignment. And most importantly, the Yachai is the cosmic intelligence. And through the alignment of love and sacred service and Kausai, now we're gonna step into turning this cosmic intelligence into cosmic wisdom. Hampui, Yachai, Hampui, Hampui, Hampui. Help us, help us, help us be in perfect alignment. Each of us stepping into our medicine so beautifully with the support of all these guardians, all these allies, with the support of our mesas, our medicine bundles, our altars, with the support of the master plants and the benevolence of all the plant masters that give so much love to us. and all the benevolence of the animals. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we place this flower, so much love. And in our centerpiece here, this is our, in this, in this ceremony, I'm holding this as our own heart. We're in the center here. And I'm gonna just flower this with some Agua de Florida. And if you have Agua de Florida or rose water, I invite you in this moment to, yeah, bring in, bring in this flowering, this scent of beauty in this moment. Three breaths. Mmm. Okay, and that ceremony is complete. Okay, beautiful ones. I would love to open it up and hear how you are, hear how, how that worked in your physiology or biology. Um, yeah, any thoughts you might have? That was gorgeous. Thank you so much. Sometimes after a ceremony like that, it takes a minute to arrive back in your body. Absolutely. <laughs> to come back from the garden and oh, find yeah. your voice again after being a hummingbird. Although hummingbirds do have quite a voice, I must say. They chatter a lot. If anyone would like to share, feel free to use the re reactions button at the bottom of your screen and raise your hand. Oh, 
Yes, Melissa. Hi, thank you so much. That was um that was so beautiful. I I I felt like I, I went so deeply and I felt like um I put something very heavy down that's been in my heart for a long time. It was very um a lot of tears. It was very emotional and I felt just um the ceremony, Ava. Um just held me so gently and safely. It was very powerful and, and very beautiful. So thank you so much. It's a um, mm. real honor to be here with you all. Mm. Thank you so much, Melissa. Such an honor to be um, in ceremony with you. And mm. I just really want to witness you in the courageousness of putting, putting that down. Thank because, you. yeah, so mm -hmm. powerful, so powerful. This is, um, this is our healing and we're not meant to do it alone. We're mm -hmm. meant to do it, you know, around this fire and we're meant to witness each other um, because you are me and mm -hmm. I am you. And, you know, when each of us has this uh, courageous willingness to heal, it actually is a lift and a gift for all of us. So thank you so much for sharing that and for just being here and bringing your beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful presence. Thank you. I want to say also there are really beautiful comments in the chat. Yeah. Um, people saying they needed to to connect with Hummingbird today and and that the ceremony was beautiful all the way through. So healing and awakening, feeling aligned. So yeah, beautiful. Thank, Thank you for your comments. Robert. Thank you very much. That was just absolutely beautiful. And um, I've been really opening into spring this year. Uh, the beauty of the colors, uh, is, it's, almost, it's almost like they become so bright uh, flowers that are out here. And my own inner garden was absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's it's um, very weird because I've been going through some difficult times in terms of getting older and what's going on in my body. But it's just so lovely just to be wherever you are, whenever you are, mm. and be in association with all of you. Absolutely. Mm. Wonderful. Just mm. really thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Robert. Your presence uh, was deeply anchoring in this space. I really felt you and was so, so grateful to have you here. Thank you. Francine. Hi, Ava. Thank you so much. That was an unbelievably beautiful beautiful journey i um i've been in a process of laying down grief for probably the last 3 years mm. and today was the first time where i didn't feel like i had a deep well of grief to tap into and lay down when we got to the part where <clears throat> we were bringing up the uh, energy from pachamama and bringing down the sami to the Inca seed, at that point, I felt such a powerful surge of excitement mm. that it made me cry, but in a with joy. And um, I feed my Inca seed on a regular basis. It's something that I do regularly, and I've never had quite this experience. So I'm just deeply, deeply grateful and full of love for and appreciation for what you brought here today. And I will probably do this journey on my own when the video comes out. So thank you. Deep bow to you, Ava. Thank you so much. Oh, and I'm, I'm so delighted and excited that that joy came forward in the perfect time and the perfect space and of course this this is 
this is the alchemy of now. This couldn't have happened if we didn't have this exact confluence of these exact people. And so I'm just so grateful and so delighted that you're here and that we get to be in ceremony together and share in this way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I will just say that I had the experience of thinking about the hummingbird and it's both its myth mythical qualities and its biological qualities from the explanation that you gave us earlier. And when you said the thing about consciously putting down the heavy things, it made me realize how if you really tap into hummingbird, you almost feel like you shouldn't have the privilege of hanging on to suffering, considering sort of how um, how effortless hummingbird makes the journey appear. Yeah, that is what a what a wonderful light you just shone on that. And I love that um, because, yeah, one of one of the many, many gifts is this invitation for us to have a light heart and for us to come to our uh, so-called work and transform it to play. This is, this is how we alchemize. This is how we make our day transformed into jo joy. Even, even the most normal, um, you know, doing the dishes, we can be looking out the window and taking this in. Are we, you know, so I love that, Trisha. I love that you said that because uh, Hummingbird reminds us to have a very light heart. And um, I can't remember who said this, but some beautiful Paco wisdom that says, you know, if, if your work is becoming too hard, then, you know, you're doing it wrong. You actually just need to stop and come back and come back with a light heart, come back with the innocence of a child and be willing to uh, be brand new, you know, and, and brand new and have this light, light heart. And we can give that to ourselves with a reminder of Hummingbird and our other winged, winged beloveds. So I love that, thank you. Yes, and we have a few more hands, Diane. <laughs> Hi, thank you. That was so beautiful. Um, I love what you said about seeing the inner beauty within ourselves. And it was just a nice surprise to see a flower um, in myself when uh, you were guiding. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's a flower right there in my Inca seed area. <laughs> um, I wish I knew the name of it. I was just looking it up. But I can't find the name, but I guess it doesn't matter. It even had, you know, color and stuff. But um, my question is, you know, I, I have allergies i've had allergies since i was a young child and so i have mixed you know mixed feelings about flowers <laughs> like i love them but i really can't have them inside my home because i just sneeze and i just feel miserable so i don't know if you have any thoughts about <laughs> i know that it's trauma based i'm pretty sure um i've tried to work as best i can but it's just hard to love flowers and see the beauty and then kind of dread them like ah yeah so, Thank you. Yeah, Diane, thank you for saying that and thank you for sharing that. Um, what I think is, is when I work with my clients, when we work with our lungs, I believe it's often to do with old grief and with old <clears throat> trauma. And so um, when the body is inflamed like that, then we are, um, you know, we're, we're being asked to, to release and to clear. And so for you, I would invite you to work with this practice and play and be creative with the inner garden, the inner flowering first. And then, um, and, and in your prayers and in your specific me uh, meditation and, and um, you know, sacred space, you could even work with those portals in whatever way works for you, but specifically asking support for your body to be able to breathe fully 
and uh, not be in reaction, you know, and because this is part of this, I believe is, um, is about um, when we when we're having when yeah, when we're having lungs, it can be sadness, but it's also about um, learning how to receive even more. And in this Western culture, we, uh, especially as women too, we, we think it's not okay to, to take you know, there's it's all there's this whole idea that, you know, it's better to give than to take. But in this practice, this is all about receiving too. And so it's receiving the love for ourselves first. And from that place, then we can receive it in others. And so I think there's a beautiful metaphor for you to work with. And of course, don't sniff your nose right into a, a major you know, pollen thing, but I would almost like, imagine just bringing it in like just so, so slowly, you know, into your, into your being. And, and um, you can have images of flowers too. Just work with the images and just keep asking for a gentle process too. So, you know, and, and if you feel yourself in resistance, it's almost like, oh, take that moment and ask your like resistance in terms of your body going, oh my gosh, ah, get away from me, flower. <laughs> you know, maybe take the time and drop into what's underneath that, because maybe there's something there for you that's just, you know, this treasure, this alchemical treasure that's waiting for you to drop into it. Um, I will say that I had such bad allergies as a child that I didn't even know that you were supposed to breathe through your nose. I actually had no idea. I have a memory of being very young in a circle of very small children and all of them had their mouths closed and I was holding my breath. I thought, how are they breathing? Because I was chronically in allergies, but I, I, I was able to work with that. So there is absolutely hope you can do that. Um, you, you got this. Yeah. So gentle process. Thank you, Diane. And Karina. Hi, Karina. Hi. Um, you know, I wanted to, to speak about we, Ava, you just mentioned the effortless effortless journey of the hummingbird and one of the things I was thinking about during this was the 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 fact that the the hummingbird can shift its direction instantaneously mm -hmm. it can fly backwards it can go anywhere it wants so tiny it can get wherever it wants to go it it's it, it has complete freedom yes. and and ability to make these quick changes and and effortlessly mm. um i'm actually when this is the perfect um community for me to be sharing this i um recently had signed up with a woman to receive the rights of the moon ip mm. and um was actually supposed to start the process tomorrow and just on thursday she canceled I trust that the universe is, you know, saying this just wasn't the right person, or maybe this weekend isn't the right time to start, or, you know, there's so many things, and it doesn't mean that this isn't the journey for you, it doesn't mean anything, it just means that the, the trail to getting there is shifted. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you very much for guiding me to the hummingbird today, because she was who I needed to really embrace the, the, okay, where are we going next? And, and be effortless and be, just go with it. So thank mm. you. I really appreciate what you offered today. That's, mm. I think I, sometimes Aww. I talk too much. So I'll end it there. Perfect. Perfect, Karina. You are absolutely on your path. You're absolutely on your path. And, and now, yeah, just like that hummingbird, you're being asked to have this agility and, and trust. And you need to trust yourself first and last. And that's exactly what I'm hearing from you is that you're in this alignment. You're ready to go here. You're ready to go there. And you're already 
just by even speaking that out loud, what you just shared, you're already manifesting the absolute perfect teacher for you. And of course, the Shaman's Directory has amazing resources with this, but trust, absolutely. This jewel, this blossoming, this, this hummingbird medicine is really inviting you to step into your power and your leadership. And it's all happening. It's going on. So perfect, perfect timing. Does anyone else have anything they would like to share? Okay, Consuelo. Okay, now. <laughs> um, a, first of all, Eva, thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful healing meditation. Everything that you brought today to our uh, shaman's directory. And I think the meditation today was pretty much on time mm. for me in many ways, and especially healing grief in my life. It's been, it's been almost a constant in the last few months, you know, losing friends. Last year, I would say, losing dear friends and um, my brother and... Uh, my dear friend of many years. So it all happened almost at the same time. But my brother brought that grief of almost a lifetime mm. back to the scene, to the scenario. But uh, I, I've been I've been processing that, you know, on my own way. But I think the meditation today it really was like a like a refreshing a balm, you know, of mm. peacefulness and beauty and light. I, I felt totally filled with this beautiful green light. Mm. For some reason, I, you know, I, I was kind of led to wear green today. <laughs> ah. And I didn't know. I, and, I, and I have chosen another, you know, two or three things. But it was the green was in my head. Green, green, green. And I said, okay, green. <laughs> Here it is, you know. Mm. So, so I think it was it was so beautiful, like a, so calming, so beautiful, so healing. And mm. I wanted to thank you for that. Mm. Thank you so much, Consuelo. Thank you so much for being here. What a blessing! And just may this hummingbird medicine, you know, just take it with you and keep calling that in for yourself, calling that joy and that healing. And, and for all of us, one of the things I wanted to share just as, as, you know, play so that we can all can go forward and continue to play with this medicine is perhaps make a little, you know, write out or print out, you are so beloved and put it somewhere where you see it all the time, you know, in your home, in a, in, the, in a place that feels really prominent, because I want you to, uh, I'm inviting you to have this uh, reciprocity where we're in this healing process and it keeps going. So maybe your morning ritual as you're uh, greeting the day, part of that is gonna be, you're gonna see this sign that says, you are so beloved. And you're going to just take that in, almost like the hummingbird. We're going to take that nectar in, give it to our, our heart, our flower. And in that moment, um, I want you to anoint yourself, if that feels right. For me, I, I use rose oil because rose oil is all about uh, self-healing. It's all about forgiveness. And it's just such an open scent but it could be anything, whatever resonates. It could be, you know, uh, but some kind of flower. So a lavender or, um, you know, on and on, rosemary. It could, it could be a little drop of essential oil, whatever feels good. But as you anoint yourself, you're also um, receiving in that hummingbird way. And um, what else? Oh, I wanted to say to everybody, just the invitation to drink flowering tea as a reminder for our own flowering. And in that way, we're, we're waking ourselves up to be 
um, to be leaders and to be uh, healers and to take care of our earth and to take care of our pollinators. So drinking rose tea and feeling that flowering is, is another way to just so simply be in play and in reciprocity. So I thought I would just share a couple ideas of, of play. I see someone saying that Dawn would like to share as well. Let me see if I can find Dawn. Here she is. Mm. Hi, good morning. Thank you for your time and sharing your your knowledge. And it gave me an opportunity to kind of go back a little bit and remember a time when um, hummingbird medicine, you know, came to me as a way of helping a person that I had worked with. So one of the things that came to my mind as you were sharing your guided imagery was a very old, uh, uh, from the Northern Cheyenne way, mm -hmm. you know, there's a certain chant that a person would say as they are aligning or becoming a part of, and it's basically looking at the mountains and saying to the mountains, you know, I become a part of it mm -hmm. to the herbs or the medicines, to the trees. I become a part of it to the morning mist, the mapa, the clouds, the gathering waters. I become a part of it. The nature, the wilderness, the, the rain, the dew drops, the pollen. I become a part of it. It takes me back to a time where a friend of mine who uh, was working in the counseling field and said, you know, um, you know, there's, there's a sadness in my family. And, you know, I thought of, you know, coming to talk with you. And I said, oh, what's going on? And she had shared that her sister was adopted into their family and was of Lakota heritage. And that she had came to her family, which was more of a Anglo family um, when she was two. And that she was removed from the reservation and that they had renamed her and that she had struggled with addiction. And she had said, this is one of the hardest journeys I will have to make. And I know this is a big ask, but because um, we didn't know each other that well, <laughs> and said, would you be willing to travel with me, you know, to the reservation to take her back to her home and hopefully see if she can meet some of her relatives? In that moment, I, I became aware that she was in need of some medicine, this mm -hmm. individual. And I had said to, you know, it's very interesting to me, but it seems like you are going to need a hummingbird feather. And I remember she looked at me and she says, what? And I said, yes, it, it came to me that you are going to need a hummingbird feather for the travel. And let me know when that comes to you. And I'll make, I'll make some arrangements and see if I can adjust my schedule to come with you. And I thanked her for considering me. And it was interesting within that same week, she came to my office really excited and says, can I close your door? <laughs> yeah. And she closed my door. She says, OMG. And she holds up this most tiny blue and green feather. Mm -hmm. And she says, what are the chances? I thought you were blowing smoke. Uh -huh. I love how people speak. You know, and said, this hummingbird feather, I was walking and I ended up finding a hummingbird that had given me, you know, this feather. And I now know that it's time for us to go. And my, um, what she called her sister, you know, would be, you know, ready to be received in a way that would help her to whatever this would look like. And, and the beauty of that story is that they received her, you know, with open arms and a lot of healing happened in that moment to where um, that person lived and became sober, which is very beautiful. I love what you said about um, being a part of and that really poignant story. So thank you so much um, for that. I think that Robert also had his hand up. 
here. Uh, what I want to say is really basically, uh, this links very much to hummingbird. To take a flower uh, now, to take its essence, mm. smell and beauty and sight and feeling, mm. take it into your heart, put it out through your hands and share it with the entire earth. Let's do that together right now. Can we? Do you want to lead us, Robert? Yeah, grab a flower if you have one. And then I, if we have time, I wanted to uh, do a, a complete with a, a little buzzing to wake up our, our voices and, and a little song, um, if we have time. So I'll bring uh, this beautiful flower, mm. the flower uh, here. Oh, gorgeous. And to just, uh, if you could, Imagine smelling the essence of these flowers and seeing the beauty and resonate to the beauty of the flower. Feel the red, this beautiful, well, I use the word red, but it's not, it's much more than that. It's, it's <laughs> words don't do it justice. Take that light into your, into your energy and feel yourself taking the essence of this flower into your energy field, into your heart. And feel what it does for you inside. And this is the essence of the earth that if we weren't polluting and we weren't damaging and we were respectful and loving, that we would be bathed in all the time. So take this essence from your heart Put it out through your hands, one hand or both, and send it out to the earth. Imagine our earth being held in the beauty of this energy. But this is the energy of our earth, and this is the energy that hummingbird takes in each and every day. And let it just permeate you and permeate the earth and permeate our air, and you can breathe this air all day long. In, in harmony with, with the flowers and with Mother Earth, and to be a walking flower yourself as you go through this day. Mm. Thank you, Robert. Mm. I love this. This is how we're co-weaving together. We're becoming our own flowering. We are a walking ceremony. Absolutely. Every breath we can we can program this this inhale with such love and gratitude and exhale as a blessing of gratitude and love and healing for our planet. Thank you so much for that. Okay, well, in the nature of sacred play, I'd love to invite each of us to um, play with this hummingbird a little bit more. We can um, we're going to do a little zh sound and we're going to use our fingers like uh, antenna, like little antenna onto our own breastbone here. And we're going to make this zh sound that's kind of just the vibration that we're calling in. So let's just play with this and, and, and you should feel it between your, and it's just a light, light touch, a light, light touch. So on our own breastbone, breathing in. Awesome. And so now we're going to uh, call in the bees. And this this is where we get to be funny and playful. It looks a bit funny, but we're actually opening our resonators. So this is how with Robert, we're, we're going to breathe in even, even more deeply. We're going to wake this up with the blessing of hummingbird. And they're going to squint our little, our noses a little bit to find it. And it's actually, um, I think of this as calling in Raven too. It's like, <laughs> And so just let yourself make some funny noises here. And, and, and what we want is we want, it's like, it's almost like, I'm a funny little fairy elf. 
So let yourself laugh and, and what it's doing is it's opening our resonators in this upper realm. And, and then we're gonna go So we're humming in this beautiful synchronicity with all the pollinators and, and, the, and the bees, the honeybees. And this is, um, I love to sing. So this is, this is how I love to, um, all of my ceremony, because it's the breath of life, I want to then sing. So this is how I love to um, be in ceremonies. I'm always singing. I'm always singing in nature. I'm always being part of, as, 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 as we've said here. And so when I was asking beautiful Seawar Kenti the other day, I said, oh my gosh, I don't have a hummingbird song. These little words came in. So I'm just gonna share them with you. And that is um, a hummingbird, flying flower, open my heart, restore my power. And um, so I'm just gonna sing a little melody. It's gonna just come out however it is. And I just wanna invite each of us, if you feel to, to sing this as well. And then we're gonna do just a, a last little piece of one more way we can invite Hummingbird into our life. And then I think we're gonna be complete. So, um, feeling our, our buzzing, feeling our breath. We're gonna just drop into this essence, this beautiful jeweled being of leadership, of agility, of love, of joy, of creativity. And I'm gonna sing this little song. Hummingbird, flying flower, Open my heart, restore my power. Hummingbird, flying flower. Open my heart, restore my power. This time we'll do it as our hummingbird, flying flower. Open our hearts, restore our power. Hummingbird, flying flower, open our hearts, restore our power. And anytime we want hummingbirds to be with us, we can call on this mighty being, Siwarakenti, royal hummingbird. We can imagine ourselves in our pokpo, our light energy field. And we can imagine this crystal hummingbird just coming right into our hearts. And it comes in and we can take three breaths and a first breath and we're gonna just do it together. And the first breath we'll breathe in and it will be this leadership. <sighs> and we receive that. And the next breath can be pure joy and uh, freedom. And we can receive that. And the third breath is just going to be love and uh, sacred reciprocity with this hummingbird. And we can receive that. And with that, dear ones, I think we're complete. I'm just going to say thank you to everyone. Aww. I want to say thank you to you. And I want to say thank you to everyone for being here today. We hope that you enjoyed soaking in today's hummingbird ceremony and to learn more about Ava or to schedule a session with her or a ceremony, you can visit shamansdirectory.com and find her in the find a shaman section of the website. And if you'd like to be invited to our future Shaman's Directory live events, you can scroll to the bottom of our homepage to receive our newsletter. So until next time, I want to thank you all for walking your sacred walk with us and flapping your hummingbird wings with us. Oh. <laughs> and we hope to see you again soon at our next live events. Many blessings, everyone. Thank you. Blessings. So blessings and love. <sighs> 
Blessings, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shaman's Directory. Such a joy to be here. Yeah, deepest gratitude. Much love. Bye for now.